Hello, this is the first video, um, well, this is the first of a series of uh, small videos that I will be doing in order to show, um, well, uh, poke uh, in action. And we will uh, start with one of the pickles, which is included in the poke distribution, um, which describes the format of the BTF um, debugging information, which itself is used in uh, BPF programs. Um, first of all, um, I have here the source code of poke and the uh, set of pickles which are distributed along with the program. They can be found in the pickle subdirectory in the source tree. You can see them here. And uh, well, in particular, today we will be looking at btf.pk, which is this one. Um, this pickle, um, it's been written, it was written by uh, an initial version by myself and then it was uh, greatly expanded and, and made better improved by David Faust. Um, so, in order to show um, the, uh, the characteristics of, of, of this pickle and how it is written, we are going to use a little um, uh, object file that contains PTF information. For that purpose, I have here a build of uh, GCC with support for BTF. Um, so first of all, we need a little program and we are going to populate this little C program with uh, variables of different kind of types. And then we will compile this C program, we will get the corresponding object file and then we are going to poke that object file using the, B the BTF pickle. So let's uh, start for example, foo is an integer. Let's have as well um, a double float variable that will be bar. Then also let's have an array of, uh, let's say, 10 integers. And let's also have a struct uh, cooks with um, I don't know, we can have here uh, an integer field A and then a bitmap B and then another bit field C. Or let's do it this way so we get more predictable uh, results, something better, easier to understand. All right, so given this this uh, C program, let's then build this program using this uh, uninstalled GCC that they have got here. We use minus GBTF. Oh, by the way, the BTF support is something that is currently, as of today, um, uh, we are in April uh, 2021. It has been um, reviewed in the GCC upstream. Uh, mainly list so it's not yet in GCC proper but hopefully it will be soon as soon as it gets accepted upstream so okay let's build the program <coughs> and then oh where is it uh, oh of course we are uh, we use CC1 which is not the GCC driver so basically what we got is an assembly file so then what we would have to do is to assemble it. And then now uh, we have an AOUT file which corresponds to uh, to this uh, foo.s, right? But compiled, but built. Um, all right, so let's go to the... Well, actually, what we want to do first is we open the file with poke and then since this is an elf file right we want to load the elf pickle here 
then um, um, basically um, the the BTF information it is uh, stored in the L file in a section called .btf like this. So we are gonna use uh, first we are gonna map an L file which it is an L64 file at the offset zero. So this is a representation of basically the oh let's have colors. This is a Emacs terminal, so by default. So let's do it again. Load elf. We map the elf file. Yeah, that's much better. So then you see, and you get uh, the elf file, which is another pickle that we will not be seeing today. But this elf file uh, type, uh, a value of which we just mapped, it has a, fun a method defined, which just gets sections by name. So we are interested in the section called .btf. So, and then BTF is basically a section header, an elf section header. Well, it's an array because there is only one section with this name. So BTF zero is an um, it's um, uh, the section header for this section. So how to access the BTF data? Well, we do it like this. BTF data. Um, well, actually not. We are not going to do this. No. So this is the section header for BTF. This an elf section header basically it uh, demarcates it delimits the an area in the elf file that we are poking right now that contains the BTF information in this case. So uh, with BTF um, sh offset this is the offset in the L file where the section starts and with sh uh, size this is the size of that information of the data so as you probably know um, the elf sections they are pretty generic and different elf sections they, they can contain mm, completely different kind of data so in this case we know that this uh, specific section it contains BTF data, the background format. So we are gonna use this uh, this section to show uh, what can we do with the BTF pickle. But let's go back to BTF. BTF is a very uh, simple um, debugging format whose main purpose is to uh, store, is to contain information about the different types which are present in a C program. Um, it is fully documented, more or less, in uh, one of the uh, documentation files in the kernel source tree, which it's also made available in this URL here as an HTML uh, document that you can, you can um, um, well, see online, right, actually we can go there you see um, here it is um, the format itself is very simple first here we have uh, the different kind of types that BTF can uh, encode that BTF can um, uh, reflect can describe uh, there is an unknown which is used for uh, types for which uh, BTF can't be used, uh, for which it is not, it doesn't, it can't represent. And then, well, you have uh, uh, a kind tag for integers, for pointers, for arrays, struct types, union types, enumerations, uh, forward references uh, to structs, uh, type defs, type defs are recorded as well. And then um, to modifiers uh, or qualifiers of types like volatile, const, restrict. Then you have uh, function types. Then function prototypes, which are um, encoded differently than function types. Then you have uh, uh, variables, which are entries in the BTF. 
that um, describe uh, that IO objects. And then you have this data set here, which uh, describe uh, sections containing objects, data objects, like variables. We will see later um, how, I mean, uh, what for this is used. So um, it is very common in pickles that they you know, uh, start with definitions like this. What is this? Well, this is a list of uh, variables, of definitions of, of, of POC variables. As you can see, you can uh, define multiple variables in POC uh, after a var um, construction. Of course, we could have also done something like this, but uh, it is customary uh, when written pickles that uh, to uh, uh, basically to uh, group um, related variables variables which are related uh, like this in a single bar construction so this is uh, straightforward enough um, then um, uh, we have here an array a variable called btf kind names which contains uh, an entry uh, for each um, um, kind and it contains uh, a printable name a descriptive name for them so note for example that the entry number zero corresponds to the kind unknown which is here uh, which is zero so it is in the position zero um, the same for integer pointer array and so on now in the case of, B of BTF those entries uh, they are they have consecutive numbers like 0 1 2 3 4 uh, 5 6 7 8 9 10 and so on and to 15 all of them are used so mm, the definition of btf kind names is pretty uh, straightforward however this is not always the case sometimes um, formats they have uh, well, let's say sort of holes, right? In this kind of definitions, in this kind of, uh, you know, of, of 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 spaces, like in this in this in in this in this uh, case, the space of BTF kind entries, um, of the space of the kind of BTF entries. So, in those uh, circumstances, um, POC provides some idioms which are useful. For example, suppose let's suppose that the data sec entry is not 15, but it is, uh, let's say, uh, 20, right? So basically, um, um, from 15 to uh, to 19 are in, are unused, right? Are unused. Um, this is common. In, in, in some formats and the reason for this are well are well it depends right well I guess that sometimes uh, um, the designers of the format they either deprecated some previous entries that used to be here but they are not used anymore or they are reserving them for some particular purpose and then they left sort of a buffer of entries here right there may be many reasons for that but let's suppose that that is the thing, that is the case, right? Well, um, when it comes to this uh, to this array, then uh, the obvious uh, uh, an obvious solution will be to basically do well something like this, right? Unused, unused, and so on until uh, uh, data sec. But this is this is bad. I mean, uh, this is bad first because we may have to write quite a lot of unused in the program. That's first. Um, in this case, we will need um, um, uh, five, right? Five unused. Second, it is difficult to maintain. Third, it's easy, it's diff it's easy to make mistakes here, and then. And fourth, uh, uh, well, I mean, it is it is ugly, you know. I mean, it's this is not good. Fortunately, in POC, you can basically uh, when you write array uh, literals like this one, you can 
um, leave gaps, right, in the definition of the elements of the array. And you can write something like this. Oh, well, sorry. It's like this. No. 19 equals unused. Well, basically, what this means, this means the entry number 19, it has the value unused. And then you may wonder, well, what happens with the entries after bar up to the entry number 19? Well, um, they have the value of the next defined element of the array, which in, in this case it is unused. So we can see this in action. Probably it will be it will be more clear. Um, where do we have our poke here? So let's suppose you, we have an array with numbers, right? So 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, right? Um, if we wanted to fill uh, zeros or some value like, I don't know, like, uh, like F, right? Um, um, up to the element number 10, we will do it like this. Oh, oh a cut off because we want to see bigger arrays, right? So let's say 15 elements. Yeah, there you go. So as you can see here, um, after the element number four, which is this one, um, the rest of the elements, they get the value of the next uh, element for which a value has been specified, in this case, F. So now you can see how this little trick will work here, right? This is useful um, um, sometimes in formats. Actually, I think that we can um, see an example here in the pickles. So let's search. Oh, okay, sorry. This is, uh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, there you are. So, to, 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 ah, this is a very, very good example. <coughs> so, here you see that, well, this is basically defining mm, arithmetical and logic unit instructions of, of some uh, uh, architecture, which, this is the MCR, which is uh, a Lisp machine. And, as you can see, there are many holes in this space. So if we have here the names of the instructions, which are which have those codes, the, those uh, uh, holes, you know, or you know, they are uh, specified using the trick that we just saw. But let's go back to BTF. Let's revert the buffer here, because in BTF, at least up to now, at least today, there are no holes in that definition. So we have the codes for the different kind record kind of records you can we can have in a BTF pro in a BTF um, section, and then the associated names. We will see later that this is used in the pretty printer, so we can have a meaningful uh, representation of those uh, of of type records in BTF. The next definition here is the definition of a type. This is our first type in this picker. So this type is BTF type ID, which is, uh, well, a numerical, mm, a number identifying um, uh, a BTF type. And in this case, it is an unsigned integer of 32 bits long. Now, there are several things to mention here. First, um, by convention, by convention, uh, when we write poke code, um, the type names we use camel case with underscore uh, separating the words. Um, in this case, the acronym, the acronym, since it is an acronym, we are leaving it in uppercase, but that's not always the case. For example, in the elf pickle, 
the types, as you can see. Even even though elf is an acronym, it's not uh, using uh, uppercase letters in you know in the word consistently. Well, it is consistent in you know in the particular pickle, but we don't do that in every pickle. But that should not be a problem. Um, but um, it is important to use this camel case and the scored camel case. Let's call it that. that this comes from Ada, basically, um, uh, for type names. For variable names like BTF kind names here, we use normal, like you know, C-like uh, underscore separated words uh, in lowercase names. Why is this important? This is important because um, in poke uh, variables and and types uh, much like in c they shared the same namespace and uh, uh, type names and identifiers which uh, identify functions or variables which are quite the same thing by the way um, they share the same namespace but they identify lexically different entities, different kind of entities. One identify a type, the other one identify a variable. So mm, it is mm, important and it is useful that when you see an uh, identifier in, in a POC program uh, to know straight away if it is a type or if it is an identifier, if it is if it identifies a variable. So that's why we have this convention. And of course we cannot enforce it and we don't want to enforce it because different tastes, you know, of, uh, different people um, are important. But at least with the pickles which are distributed along with POC, we insist on using this convention. So this type is very simple. It's just uh, a, a type ID in BTF. It's an unsigned integer of uh, uh, 32 bits long. All right. But then we have here um, more types, which are way, way more um, interesting however we are gonna jump to the last type here which because uh, we are gonna show the format and how it is encoded in the pickle in a top-down fashion right so basically um, in the elf header in the elf section sorry that we have here which we have in btf zero um, actually let's Let's redefine BTF as BTF zero because BTF it was an array of section headers. Now this is a section header. So this data here from BTF SH uh, offset size BTF SH size. This data here, this is the content of the section of the elf section, and. This uh, contains the BTF information which was built, uh, generated by GCC for the little program that we made. Um, you can see in the ASCII part of the dump here, you can see that, um, um, well, I mean, at the end of the section, there is something that looks very much like a, a string table. We will see that it is indeed an, a string table. And before that, well, we have um, um, other stuff. So this complete area of memory here is what we call a BTF section, right? Um, so this BTF section, it starts, well, it is a struct, and then it starts with a, with a header with a header and we will see later what this header looks like and what it has then basically the header um, it identifies among other things an offset uh, from which uh, there is uh, the list of type records right so if our program has i don't know let's say five different types there will be five uh, type entries type records in the btf and then here it is there is a string table and the location of this string table is also specified by the btf in by the BT, btf header um, then 
Um, well, we are using those two variables here in this struct type um, uh, because um, this type of this type offset and a string offset, a string table offset, which is the offset of the beginning of the type records and the offset of the beginning of the string table as recorded in, in the header is relative to the end of the header itself, right? So, for example, we will see that, mm, imagine that the header, imagine that the header uh, is, I don't know, I don't, well, we can actually look at it, but, um, okay, let's do something. Um, BTF section, which will be our section, we can map a, B the BT a, BTF, uh, a BTF section at what offset into the L file? Well, BTF, the section header, sh off offset. Um, yeah, exactly. It is as simple as that. Oops. Oh. We have to load the BTF pickle. <coughs> yeah, so BTF section. So this is the contents. Those are the complete contents, the full contents of the BTF section. So you can see there is a header, and then there is an array of types with all the different types defined, and then there is the string table. But let's focus on the header first. So let's dump again the area of the elf file where the btf information is and now let's take a look to the header all right here we are um, what is the size of the header so the size of the header we can use the size attribute here which is that size in bits which is that size in bytes right okay um, we can dump from BTF section header offset, uh, which is where it is it is mapped, size BTF section header size, and here it is. So <coughs> let's dump again the complete section and let's dump the header. Here you go. So as you can see. Um, it spans up to uh, 57 hexadecimal, right? So it is this area here. That's the part corresponding to the header. Now, um, okay, let's see, I'm taking notes here because I think it would be nice to have in dump an option to mark Okay, sorry. Um, then at this point, um, two fields of, let's go back here. This is the BTF header. It is a struct that uh, contains um, first a magic number, then a version, then some flags, then the size of the header itself. Mm? Um, well, let's see. Um, um, uh -huh. Then, um, then the offsets here, which are relative to the end of this header, right? Now, um, we mentioned right there is an offset for this is the beginning, uh, relative to the end of the header where the types, the, the information of the types start and the length and the string table and so on. So basically, again, this is the complete, uh, uh, the, 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 the total contents of the BTF section. Um, Uh, this is the contents of the header and if we wanted to dump the bytes corresponding to the to the type section right to the to the type so it is type of and type len 
So we will see header type offset and the size will be PTF section header type length. This is the types and we could do the same with the string ones. String offset, string length, mm, str, str, yeah, there you go. That will be the, oh, what happens here? That doesn't look like a string table. Oh, of course, because those are relative, right? Well, anyway, fuck it. So, mm, 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 mm. yeah. So, things interesting here. The BTF header, uh, first, it has a magic number. Uh, magic numbers are basically used usually to for two different purposes the first the main purpose of having a magic number in a thing like a header is to detect whether we are actually looking at the right place whether there is a btf header there or not um, 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 also uh, sometimes this is also used to implicitly um, indicate the endianess in which the, the data is encoded. Of course, this only applies to uh, formats that support different endianess. And BTF is one of those formats because you can have BTF information encoded in little endian or in big endian. Now, um, which endianess uh, this specific uh, BTF section is using is determined by the magic number used in its header. So, in this case, uh, if 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 this, the magic number is uh, this value here, then it is big endian. If it is this value here, then it is little endian. Um, if it is any other value, then it is a constraint. It is a data integrity error. I mean which means it's not a BTF header. So this is how we encode this in poke. Um, set endian is a little function that uh, actually is a compiler built-in, it's a built-in function that uh, sets the global endianness that poke used to do input-output mm, to the specified endian here. It can be endian big or endian little and it always returns one, which in POC is like in C, it is the, 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 the truth value, uh, 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 true, right? Um, so this is a, a POC idiom to set the endianess, right? If magic, look at the expression, so there is a logical OR here. So if magic is not any of those two numbers, then uh, there is a constraint uh, uh, error if you try to map a header at the wrong place. So, for example, in the ELF uh, file that we are poking right now, if we try to map a BTF header in, I don't know, some random um, um, byte offset in the file, then we have a, a constraint violation exception. Why? Because, um, th well, I mean, among many other things, maybe, but for sure, or most probably, the header, the magic number in the in the header in this section, uh, is not correct. However, we do have uh, a valid header here. In this case, we know that um, it is EB9F which basically uh, correspond to a little endian system which makes sense because we built this uh, we compiled this little foo.c program in an x86 machine which is little endian and this also means that if we look at the global endian as uh, currently set in poke it is little all right then there is a version 
This is the version of uh, the um, 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 of, the, of the BTF format, which in this case it is one. I don't know if there are other versions. I don't think so. Then there are some flags, which in this case it's zero. Fine. I don't actually know if this flags field is used or what for, but I don't care. And um, then there is the size of the header itself, which is here, right? It is 18 hexadecimal right here. And uh, it is measured in bytes. This is an offset type, right? So in the same way that magic is, for example, an um, unsigned integer of 16, 16 bits long, um, this header length is an offset measured in bytes. And this is how you specify in POC um, an offset type like this. And it is basically uh, 32 bits wide and it is unsigned. Hmm? And then we have the offsets which are relative to the end of the header itself, right? And what we have shown already, um, there is an offset for the type section which contains a record of types. There is the length of the, of, of the, um, of, uh, of, uh, and this is in bytes, you know, it is an offset specified in bytes. There is the length of the area in the BTF section occupied by type records, which is also measured in bytes and the same for the string table. And, uh, well, this is, as you can see here, those are the values corresponding to this particular section. So this as for the header. Now, after the header, we saw how we define those variables, right? Now, um, in POC, when you use, when you define declare variables inside a struct type, like, in, like here, like in this case, of course you can use those variables in the in the in the body right of the definition of these struct types and as we are using here they are not visible uh, outside the struct definition the struct type definition so in that sense mm, um, the definition of the struct type is very very much when it comes to the lexical environment of the POC program it is very much like the um, a compound statement or the body of a function, right? Or a method is very similar. It's exactly the same. Now, um, we saw, we said, sorry, that um, the offset of the types or of, the of, uh, of, of, I mean, the type of field in the header and the string table of uh, offset uh, field in the header we saw that they are written in the format as relative to the end of the header itself, right? So um, we use those two convenience variables here because they contain the absolute offset, that is the offset in the file, in the L file in this case, of both uh, areas. Now, um, how do we do this? We do this by using uh, the predefined variable offset in upper case, in upper letters. This variable here is implicitly defined and it's only defined in the definition in the body of uh, struct types and the union types. Um, at any point in the definition of a struct type, this offset variable, um, predefined implicitly defined variable contained an offset value, okay, which is um, 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 the current offset. So it is absolute offset because you know when you map it, it is the absolute. No, sorry. Mm, no, it is the offset relative to the beginning of the struct type. Um, basically right at the end of the previously defined field. So, for example, in this BTF section, we have the header here and we have the offset relative to the beginning of the struct of 
we will say basically this point, the point where the cursor is, right? So um, that is what we uh, store in type of and in a string of here as convenience variables. Now, um, what follows in the definition of the of the section? Well, mm, the BTF specification it doesn't say where the the type records or the string uh, the string section string table are, uh, but defining those fields in the header. So in principle, and I stress this in principle, in theory, they sh they they must not be consecutive, right? They should not. I mean, they they, they are not obliged to be consecutive. They could not be consecutive. They could be a split. They could they could be let's say uh, the type the type set records could come first and then the string the string table or the other way around maybe first the string table and th then the type records or there could be um, a, a hole between them they could overlap I mean that would not make much much sense but I don't I don't think that, that is forbidden explicitly by the BTF specification so um, well in practice mm, as far as I know um, the type section always follows the header and then immediately after the type uh, records uh, there is well there is the, the the string table but again that is not assured by the specification so the next two uh, fields in the definition here of the B of a btf section is uh, those fields are the, the the types entries and the strings uh, in the string table so the types records and the string table. Now, um, the types uh, record, the type records, uh, we basically uh, express them in poke as an array of BTF type elements. And we will see how those, how this type is defined later. Um, how many of them? Well, it is in the header, right? Uh, type length and add a label, uh, what we call a, a field label, a type offset. And similarly, the string table is an array of null terminated strings uh, of length, uh, a string length specified as the header at a string offset. Note how we are not using the header type of and the header string of here, because again, those numbers, those offsets, they are relative to the end of the header, as stored in the header. So that's why we have to use, we are using those intermediate variables here, those convenient variables here. And what about the, uh, the you know, I mean, how big those arrays are? So how many types we have in the type section? Well, this is one of the areas where poke shines because um, if we go to the header again we'll revisit here the header the type length entry in uh, in uh, in the header is not the number of type records that we have in the types in the type uh, in, in the in the btf section it's not the number of type records it is the length in bytes occupied by those number of records, by those records. Um, why is this like this? It is like this because, as we will see later, each BTF type, so each, each type record, uh, may be of a different size itself. In other words, depending on its characteristics, a BTF type value could have um, a different uh, size. Uh, if you think about it, it makes sense because the BTF type for an integer, for example, we can assume that it has less properties than the BTF type for, I don't know, an array, right? Because the array has to record the number of elements if they are known, the base type, the type of the elements, and so on. So um, this array here, this array of BTF type, um, the elements are of a variable of variable length 
not uh, not all the every element not all the elements have the same length um, obviously the consumer of BTF the consumer of this program of this format is expected to process the type sequentially right so a start as, as at type of decode one type record advance the mm, I don't know file descriptor you know the uh, so jump to the next one and then you you have to assume that the next type record starts immediately after the previous one but fortunately POC provides a way to um, to, to save you right the need of doing that manually what do I mean with this okay we can see it here with a mm, simpler mm, example um, let's say that um, we want to map we map um, an array of um, um, let's say an array of three integers at some mode offset in the file so let's assume let's use the the offset zero so the, the an array of three integers of the three integers at the beginning of the file well it is like that right um, this is the array mm, obviously the array that we get from the mapping it has three elements right because we wanted we specified the type in the map this is a map operator operation so the map operator is binary it gets two arguments the first argument uh, the left argument is a type specifier in this case it is an array of three integers remember that in poke the number of the elements in an array or as we call it the bounding the boundary of the array is is part of the type unlike some other programming languages many other programming languages and then the second argument to the map operator is the offset where you are mapping you want to map the value so well yeah we get an array of three elements yeah easy however um poke also uh, allows you in a type in the type uh, specifier of an array instead of specifying a, a number of elements it allows you to specify a size or in in poke parlance an offset this the size is the size of the complete array all right so for example um, um, uh, if we wanted to map um, an array of of, of, the, of the first three integers in the file but we wanted to use to specify to use a type specifier for the array using the size well what what size would we use well in this case it's easy int is uh, uh, it is a predefined in the standard uh, it's a standard type in POC which is in 32 so each integer is 32 bits wide now um, so uh, it will be um, um, in bytes it will be uh, well uh, uh, this number of bytes basically but how do you specify this how do you how do you tell POC that this number that you have here is not the size uh, the number of elements but the size well instead of uh, specifying an integer a number you specify an offset value so in this case it would be like this right well actually yeah like this add offset zero well how many arrays uh, how many integers we got we got three integers so it is the same type no it's different types because uh, again the boundary of the of the array of the of the, of the array type uh, the boundary in the array type is part of the type and it has consequences it has consequences um, you may be wondering what if we did something like this right w what kind of value are we expecting we will be expecting from the right um, 
Well, look what happens. We get an exception, which is called out of math bounds. Why we are getting this exception? We are getting this exception because there is not a whole number of integers, which is the type of the elements of the array that can span for this number of bytes. You see? So basically, POC makes sure when you specify uh, uh, a size as the boundary of an array type that when you map it or you construct it, that you basically, um, um, well, I mean, that a whole number of elements fit exactly in the size that you are specifying it. All right. Now, you may be wondering why, what is the difference between this type and this other type in practice? Because at the end of the day, you get three integers, right? In each case, and it is the same, right? However, this is the case because integers, they all have always the same width, which is four bytes each. But imagine that instead of integer, you have something like BTF type, like we have in the section here, which can be of different sizes, right? Then um, um, if the data, if the underlying data changes, um, an array of, let's see, three BTF types will uh, still work. But an array of header type len like this, it will uh, stop working, right? And, they, and because we will have, a, a get an out of mat bounds exception in case the underlying types change or get corrupted or something. So there are differences between those two types but okay now we understand we can understand this uh, definition of the field here so basically this is telling poke that the field types is an array of BTF type values containing what whatever number of BTF types fit in this length in bytes which is uh, specified by the header uh, starting relative remember the field, the, the field, uh, the fields in a struct type definition uh, labels. If you use a label like this, uh, it's always relative to the beginning of the of the section of the of the struct type. <coughs> so this number of types, whatever whatever number of BTF uh, types fit exactly in header dot type len bytes, um, well bytes or any unit. Um, starting at this offset and exactly the same for the strings and this is it I mean in terms of of uh, of, um, of data this is the definition of a BTF section all right it has a, a header a set of types of type records and a strings table which is a sequence of null terminated strings um, however, we are also defining here in this pickle a convenient convenience uh, method. Now, well, methods they have the you know the the usual uh, um, uh, semantics, right? I mean, you can invoke methods once you have a value of this corresponding type. So, for example, we have our BTF section here. Um, we can mm, ask for a string in this query a string in the string table easily right like um, using an offset for example at offset zero invites uh, from the beginning of its string table okay yeah it is an offset so we have to specify an offset right. in this case yeah it's not a surprise it's the empty string this is pretty usual in um, in uh, the um, 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 in the string tables in formats like this in binary formats now um, well how big how I mean how to get the offset to the second entry mm? well uh, we can get the offset of the the, the, the second entry uh, it will be uh, the empty string is a null so it will be the first then byte number one and here we go we get 
the uh, string int. Well, we have hit here in the array. Obviously, um, if we wanted to get the strings, of course, strings is an array. So we could do like this or like that, right? So the method get a string is used um, particularly uh, because uh, I mean this method is useful because in we will see that in the type records or in other parts of the BTF format in which uh, there is a need to refer to a name that name is expressed as an offset in the string table right so that's why that's where this method get a string is it proves useful and convenient how is this method defined well uh, the definition of methods is like very much like the definition of functions but instead of the keyword fun we use the keyword method um, there is an implicit first argument to the method which is the uh, the, the, the the struct value in, in which the method is invoked and then you can specify um, arguments um, pretty much like in normal regular functions in this case there is an argument only one argument which is offset this off um, which is an offset in bytes mm, unsigned in an unsigned 32 bits um, and it returns a string and then the body of the method is in this case well it, it maps a string at the offset of the strings here uh plus um plus 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 the given offset all right now actually this probably would be better to instead of using these strings offset to use the string offset but we will not win anything because um this method is what in POC we call uh um a not agnostic method a not ag agnostic this is a distinction that is not actually technical well it is technical but i mean the language knows nothing about this or poke knows nothing about this uh, our method is just a method which is sort of a function um, but note that the map operator in poke it only works for values which are mapped right so <coughs> back to poke if we construct an array value here right um, mm, actually no Th this is not agnostic but not for that reason this is not agnostic because of a different reason it's not agnostic because the offset attribute only works in values which are mapped so if we have an array that evaluates to an, an array in this case it's not mapped and we try to get the offset of it we get an exception no map ex exception because the values which are not mapped they don't have an offset associated with them and this strings is a field here and this string strings will only be mapped if <coughs> the, the BTF section is mapped so this means that if we get a BTF we construct a BTF section okay what is the problem here that we have to specify okay a BTF uh, section uh, we have to specify a header BTF header and we have to specify a magic number um, let's use EB9F for Little Endian. Right. Um, this is how you construct values in poke. Uh, extract values in poke, basically. We have to specify a magic number. Why? Because here the magic number doesn't have an initializing um, value. And actually, we could add it. Let's do some random hacking here. Um, this would be equal um, get endian 
Endian big. Then we use 9f eb, otherwise eb 9f. Yeah. So now it will basically use um, um, the right one without having to specify it. But anyway, we have a BTF section here. Let's call it uh, sect unmapped. Now, this section is not mapped. So, what happens if we call, uh, if we invoke the get a string method of this uh, in this value? Zero bytes. We get a no map exception. And this is what we call, that's what we call an not agnostic method. Um, now, we always uh, strive for writing agno agnostic methods, which are the methods that, doesn't, that don't require for the, the, the struct value to be mapped or not mapped. But they work nevertheless in both cases, but sometimes that's not that's that easy. And this is one of those cases. All right? Actually, we could have written this method to be ag agnostic mm, if we supported indexing arrays by size as well then it would be agnostic actually let me make a poke notes mark for dump and <coughs> indexing arrays by size yeah <coughs> yes um, because then in that case when we support this which is in the to do then we will be able basically to do this strings off as simple as this and then this will work for both mapped or unmapped uh, uh, BTF sections but this will be for POC 2.0 which will be released in uh, a few months a couple of months or maybe more huh? but it is is coming is coming anyway um, as it is now, we have to live with this method, which is not agnostic, but okay, but it's okay. Right? Anyway, um, the thing is, mm, well, actually, the method could have been written, mm, probably, yes, we are going to rewrite this. Yes, 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 rewrite, uh, get string in BTF to be agnostic yeah um, and, and 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 put a note to uh, replace to be replace by indexing by size yeah okay um, so basically this is the BTF section right BTF section BTF section, which in this case is mapped, so that's why the, the, the method works. All right, so first let's, uh, the string table is fully defined here, right? It is an array of, of strings, of poke strings. Poke strings are like C strings, they are terminated by zeros, by nulls, null characters, so there is nothing else to, to say about it. Let's go with BTF type, BTF type. Now, we can first first we can go and take a look at the btf types array here mm. 
types. Yeah, this is what how it looks like. It is an array of how many types we have in this section. We have seven different types. Um, let's take a look to the first one. This looks like um, an integer type. Look, this info field. Um, this is pretty printed. We know that it is pretty printed because it uh, starts with da with dash less than and ends with bigger than. This is by convention. Um, I will talk a little bit about this later. And well, it has all those attributes that you can see there. Let's see the second type. The second type is another integer. Then this seems to be an array integer an array type sorry uh, this is a variable this is another variable another variable this is a struct no a data sec entry and that's it that was the end the last one now um um, um yeah so let's see the first type which is an integer here and let's go to the pickle so what is a btf type a btf type is basically um, it uh, starts with a name it uh, starts with a name um, the name as we mentioned before is an offset in in the string table in the btf section um, I, and the offset is well it is, is, is expressed in bytes so basically the name of the first type in 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 the in of this type it uh, starts at that offset right now now is when the function the method uh, get a string is useful well sorry it's type zeros dot name of course right it is int <coughs> it is int this is a type the type int if we go to our c program int uh, uh, the type well it, it is this type right it is the predefined c type int um after the name there are some flags here right the flag the flags are well it's called well info info information information um this is a 32 bits unsigned integer which has further internal structure and um, in this case well different bits of this unsigned integer of 32 bits long uh, are used to encode different information so the first bit is a kind flag then there are three bits which are not used then there are four bits which is the kind of the type this is one of the kinds that we saw integer pointer array blah 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 then there are eight bits which are not used and then there are 16 bits which is this vlan uh, which is used for different purposes depending on the kind all right now um to encode mm, data like this, to express mm, types like this, data like this, in POC we use what we call integral structs. So integral structs are very similar to regular structs in the sense that they have fields that you can mm, access, like for example, this is uh, of the first type um okay let's call it type zero let's put it here so we have to type <laughs> to type less so type zero dot um, um info is uh, is a struct okay we see here a pretty printer it is pretty printed but if we want to see the details the gory details we tell poke to not pretty print so we see the struct itself so in this case first we had this 
kind flag, which is a bit, which is zero. Those are the three bits which are not used. Um, then we have uh, the kind is one, which corresponds to integer. Then this is uh, the byte, you know, those eight bits here, which are not used, which are zero and anonymous bit uh, data. And then we have the villain, which is zero, right? Because for types of kind integer, the villain is actually not used, right? Now, pretty printers. If the, well, before that, so this is a regular struct, right? Uh, it looks like a regular struct, but it is an integral struct. Note how the struct types, the normal ones, the regular, is just the struct and then uh, open brace and the definition of the fields. For integral structs like this, after between the struct and the, f and the open brace, there is a type specifier which must be uh, a type specifier for an for an for a, an integral type, right? So um, the different fields here they should they should be also integral or offsets and the they should span for exactly the same amount of bits that uh, this type here so in this case it is an unsigned uh, an the integral struct is 32 bits long and it is to be interpreted uh, stored as an unsigned integer and then this is 32 bits too 16 8 4 3 and 1 so this is this is eight, another eight, and then and then so it is two bytes, one byte, and one byte here. So it is four bytes, thirty-two bits. All right. If if you do it wrong, the compiler will let you know that huh? it, it's a compile time error. Um, so basically, um, the difference in practice between a regular struct and an integral struct, there are two differences. The first one, which is the most important is how the data is uh, stored okay and to show this i'm gonna mm, switch here uh, because um, right now the current io space is is the file laid out that we are editing we don't want to disturb it we don't want to corrupt it so i'm gonna create here a scratch buffer uh, dot mem ask spoke is a dot command as the task spoke to to create a new uh, memory based uh, IO space, which is created uh, uh, with a certain size, and you see it is memory. Uh, it is 4K long, and uh, no, it is 1000, yeah, 4K long, and it's called a scratch, right? And it is selected when you use the mem dot command to create it. So now here we can poke this without fear of uh, overwriting the, the 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 L file that we are using as an example. So okay, struct integral structs. Let's suppose that we have we define type uh, regular struct. Um, this one, this one, yeah, this is a good example. Well. No, actually, this is. Let's do something simpler uh, for for this. Let's say that uh, we have a struct which is um, a byte a, then uh, struct type. Eh? Then we have uh, a, sh um, uh, a short b, right? So this is um, byte a. Okay, let's do see byte a, byte b and short c right um this regular let's see let's construct a value here like this um well well it has it is uh, four uh, two bytes and two bytes so it is four bytes long right well oh, sorry this is the number of fields size four bytes uh, long um what happens if we uh, let's create uh, mm, r1 well yeah <coughs> r uh, let's build a regular which with a equals um, a <laughs> yeah why not 
um, b equals b and c equals f f f f well the short is signed this is not gonna work uh, let's see uh, through three four for example mm, no mm, yeah of course it is too yeah yeah two three four five so here it is two three four five h so what happens that if in 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 the current IO uh, space which is our memory IO space we were a scratch buffer which is it, it has just zeros what happens if we map um the value we just constructed at offset uh, two bytes for example right r mm. okay this is a bug in poke uh oh 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 um yeah this is no good this is no 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 good oh i have a terrible a terrible terrible uh Oof, no, no, no. Good, good, good. Well, this is a bug in poke. Uh oh. I use one dump. Eh. Now it worked. Why? Why did not reflect this straight away? Why did have to to switch? huh well anyway yeah this is weird i will have to look at this yeah, let me write this down bug mem map dump doesn't reflect okay well anyway um so as we can see here it is what we expect right the endianness is little endian so this is you know first it is 45 then 23 45 23 and then a and b because poke by default it's well by default it's always like this is what you poke is what you see is how we ypy program kind of program right so in regular struct types mm, what you define basically the fields they are always written one after the other right um but in the case of of the btf here um, we want the fields of this type to be stored as one integer and this is particularly important because when it comes to the endianness but it's not only the endianness right so if we wanted this type to be like that instead of regular we do integral struct and then we say here this is a store this this is an integral extract of how many bytes were there it was two uh, four bytes right so 32 bits now in the same way that we constructed uh, regular we say integral struct and the rest is the same so now r it is uh, like it was before and now 
at offsets we are gonna uh, at offset just below just behind you know so it's easy to see we are gonna map this new value oh of course <laughs> integral struct now r is an integral struct yeah Oh, I am an idiot. I forgot. Yes. Extract. And well, actually we wanted it in at uh, 12. But yeah, okay, for the next version of the video. Um So look, now it's much different. Now it's very different because now the data has been stored like like if the full data in the struct is stored like uh, an integer a 32 bits integer so it is 45 45 23 23 b b and a a so this is one of the first differences between a regular struct and integral struct, right? Now, what is the other difference? The, the second difference is, is more of a practical one. Why? Because now R is an integral struct, but it is an struct. So you can access the R.A, you can access R.B, you can access R.C. Fine, no problem. And you can operate with the values as well, right? It's like a regular struct. However, in a context where an integer is expected, you can use the struct value like if it was an integer, you know, like this. So in the case of, of, of this, for example, this PTF type info can be accessed as a struct to access the different fields, but also can be used as an integer itself. So if, if we say type zero dot info, it is the integral struct. But we can get the value, the integer value like this. This is a useful and nor a common idiom in POC to have to get the, the, the integral value as an integer of an integral struct. All you have to do is to do a plus zero and then it should work. You should get it. Although th this idiom may be a bit problematic in case the size of the of the of the of the struct is of a different size because there may be promotion right because if the size of this info integral struct is less than the size of an integer it will be promoted to an integer this also works mm -hmm. you can also use casts anyway um yeah so in our type type zero dot info um we have the uh, well those values and it is an integral struct with the consequences that we just explained this also has a method defined and this method is called underscore print this underscore print method is uh, is a special because uh, when uh, a struct type it has a method called underscore print then poke may use it as a pretty printer then it should get no arguments. Um, we may expand this to get uh, optional arguments, but it's, uh, I don't know. Uh, we will have to see, uh, I'm not sure. If we will evolve the language in that direction, but. And well, <coughs> uh, the pretty printer, not surprisingly, it has um, a printf that prints uh, hopefully um, user-friendly uh, interpretation of the data. What is the data? Well, the kind flag, the uh, uh, the villain, and the kind, everything. So remember that variable BTF kind names that we mentioned before? Well, we are using it here to get a nice printed representation of, in this case, the kind, I see? Then we are including the printing the flag as uh, as an integer and then we are printing the villain as well and 
when poke is asked to pretty print oh yes um, then we get the, uh, the the pretty printed value which in this case it tells us that it is an integer with flag zero and uh, a VLAN of, of, of zero zero bytes <coughs> VLAN of zero and I think for integers VLAN is not used so actually the pretty printer it could very well not print it <laughs> not show it but anyway whatever um, then there is something important to note about pretty printers which is that um, by convention uh, we are starting uh, each entry with dash less than and finishing it with bigger than and we are doing this in order that the user when you get something like type 0 and you, you see something like this you can very easily see what is being pretty printed and what not and then if you want to know um, <coughs> the gory details of the pretty printed fields field like in this case info then you have to dot pretty print no and print again and you know and and get and, sh and look at the value again <coughs> to get the details so this is all about info i hope that it's now clear um then what comes next to it well next there are some attributes right and then this attributes field is a union um, this is uh, a poke union this is not like a c union i mean those are different things um, in poke when uh, a field is or a, yeah a field is or a, you know or a value or a type is defined as a union it always means an alternative right so this means that the attributes can either be a size which is an, a, a 32 bits and sign offset uh, with unit bytes or a type ID you remember the BTF type ID that we defined that we saw at the beginning of the video it's an integer 32 bits so um, um, what is telling us I mean what indicates us uh, what kind of attributes a given type has well it depends on the kind of the type right um, how do we certain kinds they use size as an attribute uh, in certain other uh, they use attributes to store a type ID so how do we express this in POC by specifying a constraint like this in the field in this field of the union right so in this case that info you know remember info the integral extract which has a kind and ki the kind of the type encoded in it if uh, if the kind in info kind is one of int enumeration extract or union now how does this work when poke uh, maps or constructs um, um, a value of this uni of this union so the attributes then um, it evaluates it considers the different alternatives in order and the first alternative for which there is not a constraint problem uh, a constraint violation exception raised is the chosen one so in this case if the kind is one of those kinds in this array then attributes will have size otherwise they it will have a type ID in this case since this is an integer as we can expect we can see here that the attributes it is a size and this size is it's four and the size is four bytes right which the size is encoding for an integer is encoding the size of the integer of the integral type in this case which is 32 32 32 bits four bytes why because this is int which is uh, the predefined int uh, type in c which as we know in the architectures that we have today is 32 bits so um so well yeah attributes is a union and then 
what's what comes next well it depends it depends um well okay i'm skipping this because those are uh, types which are defined inside here um but what comes next after attributes a field called data what is the content of this field it depends on the kind um it may be nothing because for some simple types uh there is no additional data i mean for those types name info and the attributes is is all that needed needs to be encoded and for other kinds of of types other information is 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 encoded is added so for integers if info info kind equals btf kind int it is a btf int which is defined somewhere else in the file or an array or in case it is an enumeration, right? Then the 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 the, the data which is specific to enumerations is an array of BTF in num entries. How many of them? Info villain. You remember the villain here that it was not used by integer types, but it is used by enumeration types, like here, right? Or if it may be a function prototype or a variable then it is one of those btf variables or a member or, or a, a, a union or a struct so unions and structs they have members so then th this data uh, contains an array of members how many villain info villain again this is one kind of type in btf that uses the info villain uh, the villain field in the info uh, um, 32 bits integral struct that we saw before or if it is a data sec then it contains a sequence of sec btf bar sec info uh, also it uses vlan or again nothing right so you see um, this is why um, well this is one of the two reasons why the uh, a btf type can have different sizes depending on its own properties or its own uh, shape right <coughs> and uh, well for each kind mm, well we have uh, extra poke types here that we will see then as it is common in poke after the fields we have here several methods all right which are convenient basically so for example you have a method to get the kind name so if 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 uh, uh, if we wanted the name to access the name as a string of this type of course we could do what we did before right which is um, um, sorry we, we, we could use access the table that we had before but it is more convenient to use the method mm? by far more convenient to use the method um, there is another method here which is barark p underscore p which basically it only makes sense with if we um, if, if this type is um, uh, well I guess a function prototype right yeah yes a function prototype now this is interesting i mean we know that the type zero is an integer type and it's not a data prototype a function prototype so basically if we try to invoke this this method we get an invalid element exception why because the implementation of the method is assuming the data uh, the union data contains a func proto a function prototype right and look it is assuming it by accessing it basically and well basically this method encodes um, something specified in 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 uh, in the btf specification which is an heuristic that tells you whether the function it's it, it the function prototype um, uh, uses a variable number of arguments or not right which is um, if the last param name is this and the last param type is that uh, okay it's just an heuristic um, the important thing here, as I mentioned uh, uh, already, is that this method is assuming that this is a function prototype uh, by accessing it. 
right? So that's why why we get the, the handle invalid element exception. If we will have, if we we could have defined this method differently, in a more kind in a kinder way maybe for the user by uh, by um, um, uh, doing something like try this right um, and if um, an invalid element exception is raised then we raise um, then we raise an, an exception a generic um, or well we could do exception code ECLM because it's still an invalid element exception but we can say something like a type is not um, um, type is not a function prototype let's see I think this will work but okay the, the at the moment the pickle is defined like this and I think that um, it is good enough right I, mean, I think it is good enough because it's clear anyway um, so let's see type 0 again type 0 is this an integer and of course we can check we can prove here that um, data uh, is an struct um, and the field that was selected is this uh, integer okay which is a btf int so let's take a look btf int <coughs> Okay, BTF int is an integral struct um, of 30, 32 bits long, and well, it has different uh, data here. So there are some some bits first which are not used, they are not named, you know, not used, which are zero. Then it, whether if it's a boolean, in this case it's not. Whether if it is a char, it is not a char. Whether it is signed. It is signed, right? Because the C uh, uh, type, the int, the C int type is is, is signed. Um, this offset, uh, I don't know what this is for. It is an offset in bits. I have no idea what it is for, but in any case, it's zero bits. Uh, this unused byte here that is zero, and bits, which is the number of bits. I guess uh, uh, occupied by a value of this type which is um, um, 32 bits 20 in hexadecimal okay now um, then we have a method here which is basically um, encoding Ah, okay. The encoding is the combination of this uh, boolean p, char p, and signed p. This colon 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 is the b bit concatenation operator in POC. Um, this is an interesting operator, which uh, 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 well, you know, I mean, it's it's unusual. It's unusual. It's, it doesn't exist in in other programming languages, as far as I know. Um, as you know, in Poke, we don't have one integer type. We have 64 different types of signal integers and 64 different types for unsigned integers. There are types for unsigned and signed for both uh, for integers of any number of bits from 1 to 63. Sorry, from 1 to 64. So you can concatenate, for example, you, you can concatenate the byte uh, FF with um, with uh, uh, with an integer uh, dead beef, for example, and then you get it. You get an unsigned integer of 40 bits. You know, 32 plus one uh, plus uh, plus uh, four 
plus eight, sorry, and you basically you get what you specify exactly, right? You could even concatenate here with uh, with uh, with one bit, right? Like one as bit. You see, and you get it. Hmm? Um. Anyway, so this is a method. So this will be the integer, uh, an integer type for int, for c. Now, we could look at more interesting types. For example, if we had an array, okay, let's see which one was the array. So we had here, oh, by the way, let's go back to our file. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we had, uh, oh, by the way, did you notice that even though if, if, if we are editing the, um, the, uh, uh, the, the, the scratch buffer in this case, if we have like, uh, BTF section types, a value which is mapped to a specific IO space, this one is mapped to the file, not to the scratch buffer. So it keeps, of course, the mapping, right? Actually, you can access it in the attribute as the attribute uh, IOS, right? It's telling you the IOS number zero. And, sorry, the IOS. The IOS number zero is the file, right? Anyway, uh, let's switch to the file, actually. And um, let's see. Let's try. Oh, sorry. Oh. So BTF sections. Um, BTF section types. Let's see. One is another integer, boring. Two is an array. Here we go. Okay. So let's put it in a variable, a type. A type. Yeah. So a type is an array type. So then again, we have a name. Then we have a. Uh, Okay. Ah, okay. Well, yeah, interesting. Of course, the name of this array type is the offset is zero. So BTF section get uh, name um, a type name get a string. A string. It is the null string. It's the empty string because this type is is not named. So if we had um uh, uh, type def uh well we, we we could have it in a type def yeah of course but it, that's not the case okay um so so yeah what else um so it is an array the villain in this case is zero which uh which okay i mean the arrays are not using villain i think let's see uh btf array no i don't think it uses um villain no it doesn't yeah here it is and then um it has an element element type which is this one right and index type and end elements so here the number of elements is simple it is 10 elements which corresponds to the type here in the dot in the foo.c fine however those are references to other types to other btf types which exist in the same btf section right now um those are uh, indexes in the in this in, in in the in the in the type records in the BTF section, so we can use those. So, for example, BTF section types. So, what is the type of the element, right, of this array? Mm. Oh, of course, data array element type. Uh, 
Ah, because it's an array. I'm sorry, it's late and I'm tired. Anyway, yeah, here we go. This is the type of the elements of the array, which is an integer, which corresponds to what we have here in the program, right? And also there is uh, the index type, which is the index, the type of the index of the uh, of the array, which is an integer, but this integer, uh, it is 32 bits. No, you see, it is an integer, but it is eight bytes. So the, the GCC, a BTF, a BTF generator for the index, well, the type of the index of the C array is a 64 bits integer, uh, unsigned, you see, it is not signed. And then the number of elements. So uh, for arrays, it is easy, you know, the information. So um, we also had here a struct. We also had a struct with three fields. Let's try to find it. It's not this one. This is a variable. This is another variable, another variable. This is the second info. So where is where, where is the struct type? Array bar. There were seven, right? Oh, this is weird. Well, this is very weird. Okay, for um, sec in no, not sec for types in time VTF section types. But let's print the uh, this percentage V tag in printf in poke basically means print uh, whatever value uh, we are specifying here so in this case it is types dot uh, uh, info um, print it you know using like the poke default printer right which is like the same that you get in the prompt for a value um, what I am trying to do here right now is to um, oh actually you don't have to use parentheses you know for printf which is convenient to do things like this in the in the prompt right what I am trying to do right now is to find the type record for this struct type which should be here mm, yeah but it's not here well okay well it's not here it's not here um i don't know why it, it is not here it it may be a problem with with um with the gcc btf generator which is not up to date because that's something that actually we are developing right now in oracle so yeah well it's okay i mean um I just wanted to see an example of that um, BTF uh, member, right? Yes. Um, yeah, note how BTF int was defined at the top level, the type. But BTF member is defined in inside BTF type. Well, why? Th there is a comment here that explains why. Um, at some point for POC 2.0 that will come in a few months, we are going to support arguments to type, to struct types. It's because in this case, um, uh, the, the information for each struct member here, it actually depends on information that uh, comes from out of, of the member itself. Um, in this case, uh, it has each field has a name, a field name, which again is an offset in the string table uh, of the BTF section. Then, um, then it, it has a type, which again is uh, a type ID, pretty much you know like the element uh, type in the arrays. Um, this is the type of the field. 
and then there is this offset here which uh, it depends right i mean if um it may be the, the offset of the member in bits you see it's an offset in bits um from the beginning of the extract so i will expect in this case that uh, int a um uh, that a would be um, um, well an offset since the beginning or basically a bit field if it is a bit field so what determines whether if it is a bit field or not this info kind flag an info kind flag is basically an attribute of the type not of the field right um, so basically we need this information now we can do it this way which is defining the type btf member inside the type btf type because and of course after the field info so it becomes available and this is like you know like lexical environment which is exactly the same that mm, th that you have when you have um, um, functions defined inside other functions because poke is a block oriented programming language um or when we support soon arguments to for struct types we will have something like uh, in 32 info and then this will be you know passed here when here in the members it will be something like info you know to pass the info field here to uh, as an argument as a to the to the to the btf member type but this is not ready yet so for the moment we have to define the type inside the other type this is fine i mean this is okay but it has a consequence and the consequence is that the btf member type is not available at the top level because and that makes sense because um, you can't construct uh, types uh, values of this type until you have a particular and a specific uh, uh, value of the containing type of in this case btf type right so that's why btf member is not visible from outside which is a pity okay because um, in po while we are poking in the same way that we can create here construct new integer types or you know for example of of, of uh, an integer of of uh, four bytes long right you see how this initialized bits you know and uh, it is uh, let's say assigned integer of four bits of four bytes long you can construct it like this using a strat constructor and then you can poke it right you can write it let's go back to the to the um, to the mm, to the memory to the scratch buffer that we had ios one and then we could do uh, uh, okay let's let's poke a, a btf integer signed of uh, four bytes long at offset um, um, uh, 72 uh, hexadecimal bytes equal yeah and it is here okay it starts here so this is how can we can poke so we may want of course to do the same with a member of a struct but we can't at the moment and it's a pity as well because we can't you know um, um, if we wanted to create you know well yeah this is a new btf int um, if we wanted to create a new btf type with a btf int we will be we will we'll construct btf type um, okay by default is all zeros it gets type but we will be btf type and then here we will say data equals uh actually this is interesting integer equals that yeah mm. 
Mm, ah, oh, because this union is anonymous. Yeah, we can construct it. Okay, that sounds also interesting. Yeah. Well, anyway. Um, yeah, that's why those types are built, are, are basically defined inside the other type. But I think that as soon as we support arguments to extract types, um they will be moved to they will be made to use arguments and they will be moved to the top level and uh, i'm tired so i think this is more than enough for today um yeah uh, you are welcome to try this um play with the btf pickle um, the GCC support is not yet there yet, but LLVM has had support for generating BTF for BPF programs with the BPF backend. And uh, so, yeah, happy poking.